sorry. Uh, welcome, folks. This is uh, this is session two of Etienne, <laughs> the Etienne Becker holding. Uh, I think he's just going to have, we'll have Tuesdays with Etienne. That's where he goes. He has much, much experience in, at Maribazad with the Mandalay and uh, uh, and with Israel's first Baba Lover Kerry Ben Shemai. So he has many, many stories to tell. And uh, I'll let him take over. Welcome, folks. <clears throat> After the last talk, I <clears throat> had so many thoughts in on my mind. Uh, <clears throat> it seems Baba gave me an extraordinary spectrum of experiences this uh, lifespan. <clears throat> One of them, <clears throat> which I just shared with uh, Betty, <clears throat> concerning. Uh, <clears throat> A version which I wrote on the Torah of Master Moses. <clears throat> Maybe some of you are interested uh, to talk a little bit. Three thousand. Okay, I will say what I crossed my mind, and there will be a, a few topics tonight. Whatever will come up. <clears throat> I was in Merabad. Uh, 16 or 18 years ago. And uh, now Sherwan Anzar was there also. And uh, we were uh, talking and he asked me if I can write an article about Israel. So I said, oh, okay. <clears throat> so what happened? I was strolling around Meherabad with a tape recorder. I happened to have a tape recorder in my pocket. <clears throat> So while strolling in Merabad, all of a sudden I was struck by the vision of the first world of Genesis. In English, it's, it was translated in the beginning, but this is not at all what uh, was said in Hebrew. In Hebrew, the first world, Bereshit, I have to write it down and uh, explain you the structure of the uh, word, and the meaning of the letters and their uh, sounds. But what uh, uh, <coughs> what came to me, <coughs> it was as if a, a mental vision in my imagination. It was nothing external. It happened to me many times. I saw the world as an expression, uh, like the big band, big, big bang, that uh, the oneness broke out to manyness, like a, that the one God uh, split into endless uh, beings. And uh, later on, uh, <clears throat> I kept on uh, viewing the first sentence, and the first ten <coughs> sentence actually contains the entire knowledge <clears throat> existing entire God speaks was encapsulated in one sentence. <clears throat> and I wrote about this, I wrote the whole thing uh, in Hebrew later on. And I eventually wrote uh, a whole book, <clears throat> excuse me, about, uh, <clears throat> know what happened, about Genesis and Exodus. And the book of Genesis is a book of uh, the creation of states of consciousness and the <clears throat> role and problems of humanity, the fall of humanity, the problems with the kind and able, the first murder, <clears throat> and later on the, from Abraham, the attempt to reconstruct humanity. <clears throat> this happened uh, more than 3,000 years ago. And when I was reading, uh, looking at this record, investigating it uh, for many years, it is explaining the whole uh, situation of humankind, <clears throat> all the in and outs of uh, its uh, the problems, 
why humankind collapsed and uh, what to do with it. And the second book of, of uh, Exodus is actually a book of initiation. It tells the story of Moses, how he started <clears throat> his climb on the path till he reached uh, the level of Godhood. And in the background are, is uh, humanity in the form of the children of Israel. <clears throat> So we have uh, three spectators, God, the avatar, Master Moses, which is an initiate, which is uh, each one of us, and the, in the background, humanity, which in that instance was the children of Israel. Now, this is a long uh, story, and I don't know if uh, this is the time to do this. <clears throat> Maybe we, if you will ask, we can do uh, some Bible evening one day. Then I can uh, explain it deeper. Right. Maybe I'll, uh, <clears throat> which topic I will uh, take for this evening. can speak about uh, a little bit of, of Kerry. <clears throat> My time is there. When I came to her 72, I spoke it in the past, but I'll narrate it again uh, shortly. <clears throat> For 72, I came to her home, I spoke about this uh, last time, and uh, I became Barbarilla's sort of, and Louis. And uh, Kerry was there, <clears throat> I went away, and I used to come to her every once in a while. But I've never told her about my uh, experience, that I experienced uh, Baba as an avatar, as a highest of the high. <clears throat> and she kept on uh, trying to convince me that Mayor Baba is avatar. And I kept silent. I, di uh, I didn't dare to say a word to her because I was under the Baba's spell, I could see his image. Kerry was, uh, was talking nonstop. She didn't have this faculty of listening to the other one. Because if she would pause and uh, let me talk, then I would tell her, maybe, most likely. But there never was uh, such an opportunity because she was talking about Baba all the time and I was listening. <clears throat> and this was going on for 14 years. I've never told her till the end that I know the mayor of his avatar. And she was quite desperate why uh, me doesn't understand the mayor of his avatar. She was really a desperate. She was kind to Baba. Why he doesn't understand? What shall I do? And I was quiet. <laughs> I didn't say anything. And what happens actually, Baba gave me a very hard lesson about this. It was some uh, spiritual training out of many episodes which I had to undergo to keep my mouth shut, you know, to say a word, just to listen, to accept the situation as it is, without judgment. And uh, he put some kind of a spell on me. I, I was really worried that I will uh, break his order not to say something wrong to carry, which you, used to be my attitude sometimes. It never happened, not once, 14 years, and uh, many times, especially when I took her to Mehrabad, she was very hard and even nasty all the way through. I'm totally incompetent, I don't understand anything, I don't know what to do. I don't know, know how to order a lunch. I don't know how to take care of it. I, I don't know anything. Totally useless. And I kept my mouth shut. And then when she came back home, <clears throat> I brought her to uh, Mehrabad, to Kusho Quarters, I think it was. I brought her to the Ahmed Nagar, to the center there. And we stayed at Vilus. 
and I left her alone there because it was uh, too hard for me to deal with her. And uh, she, uh, she was uh, with, with the mandolin. She stayed there three weeks. I stayed there 10 days and I went back to Israel. <clears throat> and somebody brought her back to Israel, helped her to come back. Because what was uh, her health was failing. Her body was uh, falling asleep from uh, bottom up. This was what I uh, who could see, I, I witnessed it. I had to later on, the, I had to take her to all kinds of practitioners with uh, to make her to do all kinds of healings and uh, <clears throat> all kinds of procedures try to help her. But I had the feelings that uh, this is not going, nothing is going to help. And her, her last seven years were, uh, she was becoming slowly paralyzed from bottom up. And when the time came that I had to replace her because she became disabled, <clears throat> when she came back to Israel, I uh, attended to her a whole year. I would come morning and evening to buy her uh, breakfast and lunch or whatever she requested. <clears throat> Take care of her every, every day for a full year, twice, twice a day. Put her on the toilet, whatever it was needed, like her uh, servant. I was her servant for a full year, doing whatsoever she requested. Her condition was uh, deteriorating, and now what was that she was uh, the daughter of one of the most famous uh, <clears throat> Jewish uh, uh, persons uh, in the 20th century. The daughter, as I said the last time, the daughter of the Jewish Pope, first president of uh, Aguda Israel, the Orthodox Judaism in Germany, and worldwide later on, an extraordinary human being. And uh, there was no reason why this uh, well to do family didn't make sure that somebody will take care of her all the time. I hardly saw family coming. There was a, her adopted son who used to come uh, from time to time. And I saw him, he was very hostile towards Baba. But uh, Carrie's husband, Mayor, was a very high scholar. And I met him uh, quite uh, many times during the seventies and we, we had discussions with him. He was the first to translate uh, the discourses into Hebrew. <clears throat> and one day he told me that Meir Baba is a spiritual giant, but he couldn't accept the idea of a <coughs> God in human form. He didn't tell me this, uh, his wife told me. He cannot accept Baba as God in human form. Because you have to have the experience. I had the experience, I knew. If you have it, you know. If you don't have it, then you don't have it. Only Baba can grant uh, this experience. Some people maybe got it uh, understood by, by reading or uh, visiting places or whatever happened. Each person is own destiny. But uh, he, he didn't understand it. And the strange thing was that uh, her son, he was adopted son. The, he was the son of her husband. She didn't have children. He knew that I'm coming twice a day and I take care of everything, fixing the house. Uh, if something broke uh, down, I fixed it. Whatever was needed, everything. I was doing all the chores, maintenance, shopping, cleaning, everything. <clears throat> and he was hostile all the way through, all the time. He was polite while, I, while she was there, but when the day came, a day came that uh, she had to leave. It was too much. Her illness was uh, progressing. She stopped walking completely. And she had to be at her home. <clears throat> now what was that uh, because of her uh, <clears throat> nature and my uh, concern, I was really worried I might sleep and break Baba's order not to hurt Carrie, not to say anything untoward to her, 
whatsoever. <clears throat> I stayed away from her for three, two, three years. I didn't, almost didn't see her till 79. And then I came back to her 79 and uh, brought her to Merabat. Uh, then we came back and I took care of it. And then she had to leave. And then I got uh, understood Baba did some kind of a special trick to bring me back to her. He's very clever. No question about this. I came back to Kerry, to the old uh, situation that uh, the person uh, is uh, <clears throat> is not a bubble lover. He doesn't understand anything. Incompetent. She was abusing me all the time, and I was with my head down, accepting it, accepting the situation as it is. There came the time that uh, she had to leave. It was too much. Then I realized that I have to take over the whole uh, issue, the, this Baba Center, which was a huge pile of uh, papers and books, uh, <clears throat> whatever it was. And I didn't want to get involved with this. I didn't want any centers. I didn't want uh, to deal with spiritual people, as, as a matter of fact. Etzion, was that the trick that you think you had the responsibility for this archive? Yes. Was that the trick? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I understood that I have to take over uh, this uh, archive center, Baba's uh, representative in Israel. I didn't feel belong to the whole thing. I didn't want, like, as I told you in, in uh, the former session, I, I didn't feel at that time any spiritual, not then, not now. I'm just uh, an ordinary human being. <clears throat> I didn't want to get involved. I had uh, already bad experiences with spiritual people. They can be very difficult. And uh, I wanted to do all the good things which I thought I was doing. I was doing kinds of uh, charity work. I was uh, assisting a handicapped uh, institution uh, which belonged to the Rudolf Steinegu. They're doing wonderful work with uh, such, such things and their education, etc. I was still connected to them, because this was uh, my only people who were spiritual in the country, whom I knew. <clears throat> but I had uh, too many difficulties, maybe it's my nature, my mistakes, their mistakes, it doesn't matter. Then I told Baba, I'm not doing it, find somebody else. I can be a, a, a careless servant for the next, uh, as, long, as many years as you want. I don't want to get involved with this. And her adopted son was running all over the country to find her a home, to put her somewhere. And he didn't succeed. He would come, I would see him sometimes, because I was there twice a day, and he, he knew that I'm coming. I saw him every time. He cannot find a place. So three weeks have passed like this. On the third week, I, I, re, I have realized that as long as not going to take a dissenter, he's not going to find a place for her. And he's going to stay like this. And I realize that the whole thing is ridiculous. And at many instances, Baba just ordered me to do things and not sit. But this time he left me alone. If you don't want it, you don't want it, it doesn't matter. Then one day I told Baba, okay, I'll do it. I'll take it. As soon as I said it to Baba, immediately he found a home for his mother. Within three days, the whole situation, everything, the center came to me, she found a home like a whirlwind, just like this. It all happened like this, instantly. <clears throat> and then when I came to take the center, her uh, adopted son was there, she was not at home anymore. And it, he told me, you have 15 minutes to take all this uh, garbage out, I'm going to throw it out the window. And there were uh, very rare documents from the 20s and 30s. Uh, Elizabeth Patterson and Adele Walking were uh, ordered by Baba uh, to help uh, Kerry Ben Shammai with a work and a center, large amount of uh, books and pamphlets and pictures, everything you can imagine, a whole big library. It was a truck full load or something like this. Uh, 
quite a, I had to pack everything in 15 minutes in boxes and ran away. <clears throat> and uh, I tried to communicate with him a, a few times uh, after that because I wanted to get uh, more photos of Kerry and her family and he refused. Later on he became the, uh, he became an important professor and uh, was in charge of the Israeli National Library. Maybe he became quite a, an important uh, person. And I met him accidentally a couple of times later on, where, but it was nothing. A couple of times I called uh, his home and uh, got uh, a polite uh, refusal. So I dropped it eventually because I wanted to have more material. I was collecting material about Kerry and her great father and the family. I, I did a lot of research. That was part of my duty and uh, <clears throat> I've done whatever I could with this. And that was it. Then the whole center came to me, it was, which was a wall full of books. I, I built a little uh, library from this for wood. I uh, do woodwork, so I built a library for the a wooden uh, cabinet for the, all the books and uh, whatever there was. And, uh, the, this was, when I was looking at this wall and I'm alone, and I have nobody to talk to. And it was just myself and Kerry, with Kerry you could, could commun really communicate. I used to go and uh, take care of her in her home. <clears throat> I was in Jerusalem. Her home was in Petah Tikva. Petah Tikva is uh, uh, somewhat, uh, let's say Tel Aviv ne neighborhood. And uh, I used to travel from Jerusalem to my uh, hometown, which is uh, an hour drive. And uh, this city of Petah Tikva was in the middle. So every week or so, I would uh, travel and pass by her home and share with her and share with the proprietor. And it turned out to be that they couldn't copy there because of her nature. So the proprietor, the manager of the home used to call me that they have problems and they need my assistance because I, I learned how to deal with them. And uh, this was going on for six more years till she passed away. Now I'm getting this uh, library and I'm looking at this library. I don't know what to do. Then the inner voice of Baba, of course I've had the uh, all these years, 72, 80, before that, after that, many personal encounters uh, with Baba. It was uh, not once even physical. Not in the, I didn't see him in the flesh, but things happened. It's Coincident, yeah. all kinds, of, yes. Excuse me, sorry. I just want to, you say the proprietor could not cope with her. Was she, was she, was she, she was just demanding or unreasonable, kind of emotionally, is that? Unreasonable, it? Unre emotionally unstable. Um, not balanced. Some said she is crazy. Some said she is elated. They, they didn't know how to handle it, her, but I knew because I was directed by Baba with uh, ex extreme patience and forbearance. I had to learn how to cope and deal with it. Okay. So they, he used to call me as a manager every once in a while for assistance. To, to help them, as I would come specially and take care of things. Yeah, it was a, a kind of hospice. She was in a kind of a hospice place, yes? It's not a private she was, house. She was in a home. Yeah. It was not a hospice, but she was in the disabled the department for people who need yeah. special yeah. care, but people, it was a Orthodox institution. She, since she was a daughter of the Jewish pop, she got uh, this uh, hospital, not hospital, a home, special home for Orthodox people. So the observes the uh, strict uh, kashrut, the food has to be strictly kosher and the holidays, etc., etc., etc. What a top religious uh, person expects. And was it just you and her, as far as you knew, and only Baba lovers in Israel? Yes, there was nobody else. 
later on I got all the archive with the letters and there were names of two boys who came from India to Israel during the 60s. And I had a whole list of the names of people who during the 60s were requested by Baba to write them a letter because she had uh, <clears throat> three centers in Israel. Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and I Amirim. It's in the Galilee. And, uh, but when I came here in 72, there was no, nobody at all. Nobody. And that was Baba's working because if there were more people, I would never receive the center for them. She would never al allow me to have a center. It's a person who is a non-Baba lover, uh, not re reliable. Uh, this person doesn't understand anything. Good for nothing. She has stamped me as a good for nothing. And uh, I was uh, just like this, accepting the, my uh, uh, sentence <laughs> from Baba learning to be quiet and humble and, and, and not to dare to say a negative, not a single negative word came from my lips for 14 years towards getting nothing. But sometimes I was, uh, with other people, I would give them on the head, but with her, not a single, not, a, not an itch, not, a, not the minutest scratch, nothing happened. Did she ever recognize your, uh, the, your love for Baba? Did she ever, while she was alive? Who? Did she ever recognize that you, your love no. for her? No. no, 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 never. She gave me a center, and each time I, I would come to the home, she would tell me, you remember, you have to, I'll, when I'll go back to Jerusalem, you have to bring back everything. I told her, of course, but I knew she will never come back. <clears throat> Prior to that, of that uh, while I, I was aboard, I told you last time I had some involvement with American uh, group, which uh, the whole thing was uh, collapsed eventually. And uh, I went there to United States with a few of them for a course. Also, we had a course in healing. I was uh, some form of healing with the hand, uh, hand radiation. I was pretty good at it. I, I could bring people to very deep relaxation. But it's not healing, as I didn't claim it to be healing. The person has to heal himself, et cetera, et cetera. So I shared it a few times with Kerry. I remember till today. I think it was uh, maybe after we went to Meir Rabat or before. I shared a session with healing session with her. I told you, Kerry, please, for one minute, one minute, don't say a word. Just be quiet. And she couldn't. She couldn't stop it. She had to go all the time. She was chattering nonstop. And her illness stopped. That's the way Baba did. He brought the, She was falling asleep. And she couldn't do anything. She couldn't speak almost. He made her quiet eventually. That was a, his way. Her last six, seven years were uh, very difficult <clears throat> in a sense. But he, she was totally unfolded, whatever needed to be with her. She was very well looked after all the time. Okay, <clears throat> I'm getting this uh, center, this, uh, this huge pile of books, and I'm looking at this, uh, what shall I do? And the, the inside voice was telling me, I feel Baba is saying, do something. And I look at this and say, what do you want to do? I don't know what to do. I'm not a speaker. I'm not, uh, I don't have any connections. I'm not a spiritual person. I don't know why you found me for this. You maybe should do, I found a good spiritual person. The people flock around him who, who write books and gives discourses and this and that. And I'm not this. <clears throat> and the voice gets to do something, do something, do something, do something. And I look at this, and one day I grabbed a little booklet. The booklet was Meir Baba on War, which was published by the Pune Center. <clears throat> and since I'm in and out of wars at that time, it was nonstop. 
80s, we had a war with Lebanon, 82, 81, 82. We, I was in a combat uh, unit and we all the time were in and out uh, all, all kinds of uh, uh, operations around the borders, protect the borders, going, uh, taking care uh, of riots with uh, Arabs in the West Bank, all, whatever the government uh, demanded. For me, it was very simple. Uh, since Baba came to my life, uh, I said to myself, whatever is happening is Baba's will. I just have to accept it. You go to war, you go to war, you live, you die. That's his will. His will. I, I didn't care about anything. Because uh, people who didn't like it, I said, and I never objected to all these things. I, I just did what I was required by the government. And later on, I learned that uh, this was Baba's instruction for, from all of us. In case of crisis, war, or whatever it is, we have to obey the, the directives of the illegal government. And our, of course, our legal government is the only place where we have uh, <clears throat> democratic elections from, uh, from the ocean of Morocco till Indonesia. It's the only place on that uh, re place of the planet as there are such elections. There are no elections whatsoever in the entire Muslim world. Forget it. This is just a fake elections. All of them is no exception. All the Muslim and Arabic countries, there are no such a thing. It doesn't exist. There is a ruler, a fierce ruler. All of them, all, all Arab Muslim countries are uh, very tough police states. All of them. <clears throat> but it's not the issue, of course. So I was taking this uh, book, Meir Baba on War, and I'm all the time in, on war. So I said to myself, okay, I'll go ahead and I'll uh, translate it. I locked myself in my apartment and I started to translate. And soon, uh, and I never did, I've never done such a thing before, like a translation or something. I took a few courses in English before that, and I knew how to learn to speak uh, more or less fluent English with a group of uh, the people who came from America, the uh, thought spiritual people. I shared with them a year or two and uh, <clears throat> I learned to speak English uh, more or less because then I have never left uh, Israel before that. I have never studied uh, English properly in school. Baba taught me. He taught me also. So I locked myself in my apartment and I started to translate. As soon as I took the pen, I started to write. There were no computers at that time. I, I didn't know how to use it. Some wind, wind got into me. I was uh, was taken, uh, I was seized by some spirit. And the spirit made me translate the whole book. I was working on it day and night. I don't know if I slept at all uh, during those two weeks. Maybe I took a nap here and there. Don't stop. It was accelerating, it was unbelievable. Fantastic experience. You, you're inside the, the whole spirit. Uh, uh, you're being uh, enfolded by uh, the divine, by Baba. Extraordinary. And then when I, it took me two weeks. I finished it, it was midnight sharp, midnight. <clears throat> and as soon as uh, it was exactly midnight, I felt the two hands are holding my arms. You could feel this pressure, strength of something is holding on you. And you can see the indentation of the fingers. This happened to, to me before a couple of times, for whatever reason. But uh, I have never made, put any importance to all these experiences. I saw Baba face to face uh, as an avatar. As the rest for me was... Uh, Insignificant. Never made any issue from uh, spiritual experiences. It looked to me like uh, something uh, not important. And the two hands uh, <clears throat> started, uh, my hands were writing automatically. This never happened to me before and not after. And presumably it happened because I don't believe in such uh, phenomena. I didn't believe in such things, but it did happen. And what I wrote at that time was uh, 
I sent it to Betty, there was an article which I called it uh, only Israelis and Ishmaelis. I sent it to Betty. <clears throat> so this was written through me. It was the first time, that was the very first article I wrote at all. And it was written in Hebrew, not in English. Later on, many years later, a few years later, I, I did the translation into English for the English audience, etc. And, and the gist of the article is something like this. You have uh, two components, two bodies of humanity. One body is a spiritual, one body is a material. In the Hebrew Bible, you see Cain and Abel. Abel, Abel, how you spell it? I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. We say Abel, Cain and Abel, yeah. Okay. Or you said Abel. So, <clears throat> Abel, Abel is a spiritual man, Cain is a physical man, and uh, the allegory is that uh, Cain slaughters uh, Hebel. It is actually inside as while I was writing this interpretation of the Torah, it is actually the physical man kills the internal spiritual man. So the, we become physical people and the, our spiritual heredity was being uh, killed. <laughs> This is actually the story. Inside of us, there are two brothers and they're fighting uh, on the dominance. We have this internal war within ourselves and uh, the physical material aspect of man took over. And that's the way the world looks like this. <laughs> because if the physical man takes over, the man, the world uh, falls apart. And it was after the story that uh, Adam and Eve were expelled from the Garden on Eden. Eden, I can explain what Baba explained to me about this, which sounds totally different than the regular version. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. The story is that uh, Israel is a spiritual aspect of humanity, and Ishmael, <clears throat> both of them, one is a son, and one is a grandson of uh, Lord Abraham, the avatar. Abraham was the avatar as Baba explained somewhere, <clears throat> and he gave uh, birth to two children. One is Ishmael, Ishmael mean, meaning listen to the God man. And the grandson, in the beginning his name was Jacob, but when he became realized his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Israel literally means the God man. The name of this country is Israel. The state of Israel, the state of God. They don't know. <laughs> I don't think the people who, to, who gave the names to the country had any idea whatsoever what names they have taken. A very serious uh, name. And in this essay, what was written in, in brief, I think the whole thing is just a, a page or two. That uh, the spiritual people have to maintain uh, the spiritual identity. It, it is being explained. We understand, we all of us are supposed to know what it means to be active spiritual person. And the spiritual person must be protected by the material person, which was Ishmael. And so Israel is a God man. Ishmael means listen to the God man. Be his protector. And physically, the, the duty of the Arabs has been 3,000 years ago to protect the, the children of Israel, the Jewish people. So this brings quite a serious issue, what's going on today. So, and this article is actually the blueprint of uh, healing this situation. And of course, no, nobody understands, uh, understands it. And nobody is not going anywhere. It's on my website and I gave it to a few people here and there. Nobody cares. People don't uh, take it uh, seriously deeply, but but uh, this is the only way to heal uh, not only this situation, it's this uh, entire problem of humanity, 
The spiritual people should lead the, the physical world. This is our duty. And it's not happening. This is a problem, and not a problem of uh, lands and borders. So this is uh, not going to be healed by making a two state solution, three state solution, 2,000 states solution. We have 6,000 on the planet of nations and religions. I read it somewhere. Maybe less, maybe more. And only 200 of uh, their uh, <clears throat> country in the United Nations. But there are 6,000 nations on, on Earth. All kinds of small, big, whatever. And each nation is a member in the body of hum humankind. As each one of us has an organ. Each organ is a nation. And I wrote in this article that the Jews and the Arabs are like the two chambers of the heart and they, they have to learn to work together to, to pump the blood circulation of humanity. That's the idea of that article. You can read it. It's a, I think it's on my website. Or Betty has it. If you want, she can share it with you. You can ask me. I can, so this email, would, excuse me, I, can email, I can email the essay to anybody who wants it. If you put your uh, email in the chat, I can email it. If, if somebody wants it, they can ask it for me, from you or for me. Or, but but he, he, it, has it, uh, he has it on the site. It's, uh, it has to be on my website, Mayor Baba Israel, I think. It should so, be there. Uh, okay, you can put the link. And they can get there. Mayor Baba Israel, as it is, dot com. Dot com. Okay. I'll write that in there. Good. Okay. I think I gave it to you. You have it. I sent you a Bye. mail with my website. And three websites. One's a Mayor Baba Israel, one at sionbecker.com, and one is a business uh, website. Okay. I simply don't want to take the time. I'm getting to it. Uh, if the audience uh, wishes, uh, maybe, maybe we can read this article uh, now or later on or some other time. Anyway, there are more uh, things we, we can share. So I started with this thing and I prepared it. Uh, I sent, uh, and here is what happened. I told you before, you see things are coming to my mind while I'm talking to you. I shared with you is, is during the last session that uh, Baba told me during the war of 1973 that I'm the originator of the world. I, it's, I, I caused it. I'm responsible. And I was arguing I'm not responsible. I didn't do it. He said, you're responsible. Whether you did it or not, you're responsible still. And how to heal the situation? I was totally shocked when uh, I got this. Actually, I lost my brains. I was there with all these carnage, and I've been to many wars. What we are doing to each other, I don't know. We insane the species. We definitely not human beings. Human be, how they call themselves? Never mind. Etzion, I'm hoping we can hear from Lutvia if she, um, I, I, I don't know if she has something to contribute, but I, I'm hoping we can hear from your friend, Lutvia. Yes, yes. Hi, Betty. What would you like me to say? Uh, well, I, I'm enjoying the stories. <laughs> Good. I, only if you have something on your mind. I know you are Egyptian, right? So you yes, are I am. The, other, yes. the other side to this. Well, I don't want to weigh on Ezion to, to ask him whether he feels optimistic because he looks strained this evening. He looks weighed <laughs> upon. So better avoid this question. But no, it is okay. a little bit depressing. It's okay. It's okay. I'm so glad you're First, here. Um, <laughs> well, I can explain. <clears throat> I... <clears throat> The expression pessimism and uh, 
או אופטימיזם. It's not the issue for me. I do my work. What is my work? As uh, I told you before, my work is to, to erase some scars, uh, how to erase some scars, which is, was the main issue uh, last time, and we can go back to it, that I take this scar, this uh, particular uh, situation, envelope it, give it to Baba. And I, if I have to do it, uh, 10 times a day, 50,000 times a day, I have to keep on uh, give it to him till the whole thing disappears. That's the way he trained me to do this. So I have nothing to do with uh, optimism, pessimism. I'm just uh, working on this. And of course, naturally, there is a tremendous amount of suffering in the, the country and in the world with uh, not only humanity. Humanity is just a small fraction of the suffering of the creation. And because uh, most of the suffering by our ignorance, by our, the decisions we have made to forsake the spiritual path. <clears throat> so I share the suffering of the people, not just this war in general. But uh, my duty is, is Israel. I'm not in charge of the whole uh, world, thank God, and not on the whole universe. And, uh, the situation here is uh, I'm unfolding it, so I share it. So the people who people were kidnapped, uh, I'm with them. I'm not uh, aloof. I'm not uh, uh, what you call it. I don't have <clears throat> fat schemes. I don't have any feelings. I feel the people. I unfold them. But what I am doing with them, I send them hope. What is this hope? So this is temporary. It's a sooner or later we leave this physical realm and they will be ascended. All these people who were hurt during the October massacre, this is between me and Baba. I ruled out whatever I ruled out before him. <clears throat> it's actually considerably simple from the karmic point of view. People are doing such a thing to others they take the, their sanskar upon them. So the perpetrators, <laughs> they are not going to win some uh, heaven, uh, Muslim heaven. The Muslim heaven in the Quran, that when you are sent to heaven as a martyr, you receive, you come to the place with rivers of wine, and each martyr gets 72 black-eyed uh, beauties. This is a, uh, most, it's in the Quran. <coughs> the paradise of sex, free sex for eternity. This is insane. There is, there is no such thing. I don't. They made it up. <coughs> the Quran was from the past, uh, during the past 200 years after Muhammad, and uh, we don't know what uh, was really original writings for him or not. It's a heavy issue, the scholars are, have been debating over this, but I don't know if you want to get into it uh, this evening. I can get into it. I, I made quite a, <coughs> sorry, some research and study about uh, this problem of uh, Islam. It's actually the problem of the Advents. And what's happening uh, at that time of Muhammad and the time of Jesus and time of Moses, there is all the time new advents coming and going, coming and going. Each time there is a, an advent comes and it rises and become, becomes eventually some kind of a system of control of the people, what we call a religion. <clears throat> and then it falls apart. Eventually it falls into black magic, as we call it. What is black magic? It's, it's not such a big deal. Anything which has coercion, fear, um, Everything which uh, forces you to for belief. White magic is totally the opposite. Doesn't do anything whatsoever to influence the people. You have a, uh, you are being uh, left alone for your decisions. You have to make up your mind. Nobody can uh, tell you what to do or not to do. You have to take responsibility or not. <clears throat> but these systems that people are being coerced, is are being forced to for a system of belief. This is always a black magic. And so each time 
Is a this is each time it advent becoming uh, turning becoming from white magic, which is awakening humanity, to black black magic, which is controlling humanity by uh, uh, the clergy and the priesthood be, for uh, power, fame, profit. Uh, you you know the whole thing. You can see it uh, all uh, almost all over the world with most religion, maybe not all of them. Maybe some here and there you have uh, cleanness uh, systems. Not everybody is like this. <clears throat> I think like the Sufis, they are, this is a light of uh, uh, Islam, special uh, stream from uh, Muhammad, originated uh, initially Sufism by Zoroaster. This is uh, and eventually became into the Jewish Kabbalah, etc., etc., presumably. I'm not expert in this thing, but I think that this would happen. So what's happening when the old a new cycle comes, a new advent comes, it impinges upon the old one and the clash. And this is what's happening in the Middle East at the moment. It is a clash of a few advents from the time the Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, and Meir Baba. The whole thing goes like this now, all of them clashing with each other. But the people, of course, have no idea what's going on. Yeah. I am aware of it till a certain degree because I have been uh, working on this issue, working uh, with Baba. Here and there, he would give me insights. Here and there, it is in the, his writings and his, his scriptures. He speaks about this, the problems of the Advents. And what's happening now, because this was the biggest Advent, he <clears throat> presumably is banging all these advents together. He used to bring his disciples, say, you know, to bang the heads against each other, like he was putting myself and uh, carry together, so we'll bang the heads against each other. Of course, uh, <laughs> I didn't do anything, as I said. But uh, this is uh, his way of bringing things to focus. And he was doing it to the Mandali all the time. And his Mandali, as we know, represented uh, many advents. From the Rastav, Rama Krishna, Buddha Muhammad, Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Muhammad, and the perfect masters, etc. So everything came to focus with Meir Baba, the entire advents. He brings everything to focus, and this is, a, <clears throat> as we can say, a very painful situation. It, uh, when it comes, war are, are coming. I was, uh, spoke about the necessity of war. It's coming from uh, the Godhead. It is originated by us. This is a human invention, war, <clears throat> due to the fall of man when we fell from the state of uh, the spiritual state to the material state. We started to envy and hate each other, we started to blame each other that we destroyed the garden and <clears throat> the, we blame each other why the world is not in a perfect uh, state, like here in, in Israel, the Jews are blaming the Arabs, our Arabs are blaming the Jews, we are all in a mess, we are in a hell, you are responsible, you are responsible, everybody is pointing the finger at each other, well the solution is very simple and very easy. <clears throat> But they are not pointing uh, who is responsible, not responsible. This is a situation. But Baba is uh, begging all these uh, sanskaras from the past uh, 7,000 years. <clears throat> Could be here, especially in the Middle East, but, but there are serious uh, tensions all over the world between India and China, India, India and Pakistan, India, uh, Pakistan and Iran. Everybody is against each other. Everybody. The whole world is in a mess. It's part of this process. Which direction this is going to go, uh, of course, I have no idea. We'll see. Yet to be seen. So what happened to this uh, little book? I trans uh, prepared the book. I, uh, of course, communicated with the trust. Now, <clears throat> what I wanted to say is that uh, when uh, Baba gave me these explanations about uh, my responsibility, also, I got uh, the hint how to 
heal humankind is this creating spiritual circles. I'm talking about 73. I didn't read any Bible book. I didn't understand anything. And here I'm getting this idea of spiritual circle. What is spiritual circle? Few uh, spiritually minded people who are centered there on the divine and they're willing to work together with harmony. So I was looking for such people in Israel. Uh, I was searching with the, within the circles whom I know. And this was one of the reasons I didn't want to get involved with this spiritual people in spirituality and the Baba Center, because I knew that I have to do it uh, with the spiritual circles. I, I need a group. I need to work with a few people. So we'll have a, the broader visions. Uh, so we'll work together with less mistakes, etc. <clears throat> but see what happened. I finished the translation of the book. And I prepared, at that time I had the communication with the trust. It's, it was 81, 80, 81, don't remember. <clears throat> I had the communication with Money and Jack Small those days. So I prepared a long letter to Jack Small with 30, 30, three zero questions. All kinds of issues which I didn't understand, I didn't know, because I didn't know anything about anything. And what happens and with hints, I then I, I, I wrote a mail, the letter and I mailed it to India. In those days, the let, it would take the letter to India two months each direction, two months to get to India and two months to receive the answer because it was going within every relations with India. It would be delivered through the London, a big deal. <clears throat> Three days after I mailed the letter, all the answers were, all the questions were answered, one after another in three days. And I couldn't believe it. So as if Baba gave me the hint, you walk for me, I'm, I'm your circle, right? We saw all your problems, just walk. Don't worry about anything. That was his answer. I couldn't believe it. I still have a, it in record. Most of my experiences, I didn't keep any record, but here there is a record about this. I don't know if I got an answer from the trust or they didn't have time for this, but as I said, I got all the answers. <clears throat> all of them, all 30 questions, one after another, one after another, within three days, amazing. I, I would open a book, a book by random, here was an answer, I did this, was, all the answers were there, I just had to pick it up, and that's it. So this gave me the courage and the <clears throat> trust and the confidence I, I'm on the right track. So he, that's the way Baba is working. He, he helps you, he gives you problems, and you have to learn to overcome it, you have to learn to cope, and you have to learn to trust him, which is, it's not such an easy thing. Then I prepared the book for print. It was uh, being prepared almost, uh, it was inside the, <clears throat> I got okay from the trust for money. And then one day, I, the book already was inside the wheels of the printing press. I'm getting a, a cable for money, hold on a publication. So there was a, some uh, situation. I didn't uh, accept it, etc. It doesn't matter. So I had to quit uh, this issue. I didn't, uh, I cannot go against it. So what to do? And I still have uh, this uh, <clears throat> push from Baba, do something, do something. Do, this is not working, do something else. What to do? I look at, the, uh, at uh, my archive. I found a, a book, a brochure from the early 20s. Sobs and throbs. And uh, it was over 50 years after the publication, and I called the publication, important publication house in Jerusalem, and consulted uh, when copyrights expire, if I'm permitted to publish it. So they told me that 50 years after the publication, the copyrights expire. This is not true. It's 50 years after the death of the author. <clears throat> 
something like this. It doesn't matter. But what was, <clears throat> they said what I need to know. <laughs> so I took soap and soap, which is a story, I call it the story of Ali, and translated it into Hebrew and published it without notifying the trust. And a year later, I went to Mehrabad and I just gave it to them. Or maybe I mailed them a copy. I don't remember what I did. As I was quite overwhelmed by this. <clears throat> uh, it was Jack Small who told me this, or later on, World Parks. <clears throat> we still have the copyrights, so I had to make a note. That but they didn't complain, they didn't say anything. They, they realized that this guy is uh, <clears throat> determined or is a little bit uh, better not to make it too, many, too many troubles because of this. They actually were very happy, and uh, our Michal came to Baba from this booklet. And there are quite a few others. Right? Oh, oh she's going to get it, I think. Uh, yeah, tell us, Mikhail. So why don't you say something? Yeah. You're, uh, you have to unmute, Mikhail. You're muted. Yeah. You're muted. <clears throat> this is the book. What's yeah. it called? What's the English? It's called uh, the Meher Baba, the story of Ali. It's actually not all sobs and sobs. It's um, it's uh, the story of Ali. You know, mm -hmm. one of the boys in the Prem Ashram, and so it's um, shortened version version of it. This is the boy oh, yeah. Ali that he was taken by his father again and again, and uh, he ran away from his father again and again. And Baba said that if um, he does not stay at the end, then he will close the Prem Ashram. So this is Baba at the beginning of the book. And uh, and where did you find this book, Mikhail? Well, actually I found this book because uh, <laughs> I was thinking of going, uh, I was thinking, no, I didn't want to go to India because I didn't want to go to see all the things in India, all the poor people in India I couldn't, I didn't think that I could uh, do that. I could uh, see all the poor people in the streets. But um, I realized uh, after a time that I was on my spiritual beginning and I realized after a time that what was happening here in the Bible time in Israel, that everywhere you could just find God under a tree, a perfect master or someone or some guru and learn from them. Uh, then this was happening in India. And um, I thought that I have to go to India, even though I didn't want to go to India. So... Um, I was going into this bookstore to get a book for my children before I'm leaving. And it was a secondhand bookstore. So um, they had this book that I needed. It called um, The Never Ending Story. No. That was, yeah, The Never Ending Story. So, uh, so it has to do with Baba too, Never Ending Story. So um, I got this book and then I went in the back of the bookstore and I just browsed around and and it's second hand you know and there was books one you know books are put on a shelf like this so you can take them out and see their back but here they were stacked one on top of the other and I put my hand in and I pulled the book out and this was exactly. the book so I opened it up and I just opened it randomly and I started reading and I said oh yeah that's interesting but I'm going to India. I never had money. So I don't have enough money, you know. And so I look in the back of the book and it says two shekels. Two shekels is so cheap. I say, oh, Baba. <laughs> I didn't know Baba yet. <laughs> I say, oh, two shekels. I can't say that I don't have two shekels. So I got the book. I said two shekels. Then I then I'll browse around because I was a bookworm. <laughs> So I browsed around and I took another book and that was uh, the one who's taking care of the um, Albert Schweitzer, the one who's in Africa taking care of the, how do you Albert. call it? 
yeah what what is it called that the this illness the illness of the people um, that Albert Schweitzer was taking care of that Baba also took care of the, the ugly ugly cage <clears throat> leprosy 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 yeah so Albert Schweitzer was was doing that work so I took that book too and I took these three books and I went back home and. זה בסדר שאני אמשיך כי אני לא רוצה לקחת את... לא, 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 זה בסדר גמור, זה בסדר גמור, תמשיך להוציא. And uh, it's uh, and and it was lunchtime, and that's when the buses are starting to stop uh, being on the streets uh, because we don't have uh, this um, buses uh, on on in Jerusalem on on Friday when it starts to be Saturday. So I was in this packed bus, and there was one place right at the back of the bus, and I went and I sat on the back. seat and I put my hand into the bag and I took this book out and I started reading because at the beginning um, Etzion put um, put um, a, a bio, short bio of Baba uh, right? wow. yeah so it's a short bio and um, and so I started reading and um, I didn't realize that I uh, was captured totally what happened was I'm very good at knowing where at being able to see my way around and getting you know I have a good sense of space of space so I can get along in space very well and I was just uh, taken into a Bermuda triangle in the bus and I wasn't realizing that I did and so I could could have just um, gone on with the bus without realizing that I have to get off in my station. And it was like an angel was touching me and saying, you know, you have to get off. So I got off and I rushed home. And it was um, that time I, I was divorced and my children were with my husband, uh, with their father. And so I, I rushed home quickly and I said, settled everything and I said I, I have to read this you know so I went and started reading it and it's a very small book so um, I read it and I was really taken by it I didn't understand anything that was happening in the book because the children were crying all the time and I'm a Oh. kindergarten teacher and I'm a teacher and these children were crying all the time <laughs> and I didn't understand why they were crying but it made such an indent on my on my on on me that I didn't even realize how and at the end of the book um, Etzion, um put some um, centers of Baba So, and some more books, yeah. So here is um, the post box of Etzion at the end. So I immediately wrote to Etzion and I said, I'm going to India within a month. And um, this book was very, very special. And um, I would like to know more. And um, so Etzion called me within two weeks. And he said, I'm going to be around in your neighborhood. And there are some more books. Would you like to read? And I said, yes. He said, no, but they're only English. This one is in Hebrew. So I said, yeah, I'm reading English. It's okay. And so I'm saying to myself, you know, this man who's writing this book and who's such a good scholar and everything, and he's... And he's um, He is uh, willing to come to my house, you know, <laughs> and make, take the trouble, not to, that me to go to him, but he's going to come to me. And I love when people come to me. I always love when people come to my house. So um, 
And he said, I'm going to be in the neighborhood. So do you want me to come? And said, yes. So I'll drink some books. I said, yes, please do. So here he comes. <laughs> it's John, as you see him. He comes to my house. Now at that time, my house was all um, carpets and um, mattresses on the floor. And uh, we were all sleeping on mattresses on the floor, each one children in their room i in my room and in the in the third room which was uh, also had mattresses so um it's young comes with a pack of books and he just spills all the books on the uh -huh. carpet <laughs> there's a whole bunch of books and uh -huh. i say oh but i'm going to india soon so i won't be able to read all these books so he says no it's okay it's okay don't worry <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we started so this book is just beautiful yeah. um, very very beautiful because uh, many of us come and cried when we come to Baba then I a, a bit more understand why they were crying yeah. I don't know if I understand completely and um, and but but what caught my heart really was the bio of Baba. Because in the bio of Baba, he said, oh, Baba got a kiss from Baba John. And that's how he became God realized. And I said, oh, that's easy. <laughs> you get a kiss, you get a kiss and you become God realized. But then he became a zombie <laughs> or must like. And I said, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, I have to think about it. <laughs> but then he banged his head you know he banged his head and why I was into spirituality because we are suffering when we are not when we are not in spirituality we suffer more so so you know so in spirituality they say you do meditation and then you suffer less or you take uh, you do om 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 and you suffer less or you do yoga and you suffer less so I said, okay, I'll try, you know, I'll try. <laughs> so uh, Baba banged his head after he was God realized. I said, wow, this one, he knows more than anything. He knows beyond meditation, beyond Om, beyond yoga. It's not about suffering less. It's about suffering even more because you become more 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 uh, sensitive you become more sensitive <clears throat> so you suffer more but but this the but baba supports you so but at that time i didn't know about baba that he was god but i knew that he was the highest spirit highest spiritual being that i ever met and that was what really attracted me in this way and i won't take any more time for mitzion because he has all these beautiful things to say Thank you. Can Thank can you. I just ask you, did, did you get together with Etzion then and talk about Baba and kind of have Well, um you see I was just a uh, very short time before before going to India. Yeah. So you know it's 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 a longish story but what happened was um I didn't want to go to any ashram. And I knew that Baba was not in the body. So uh, I wanted to find a teacher actually and uh, to live with them in their home to see how they go through life, uh, what they do when they're sick, what they do when they don't have money, what they do with their children, what they do with their wife, what they do with, with, with the people that come into the house. That's what I wanted to learn, how they deal with everyday life when you're spiritual, how you deal with everyday life. So I didn't want to go to any ashram, but getting to know Etzion, and he did say that Baba is God, but of course, you know, I'm Jewish. So I, 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 Etzion saw that in the first meeting with the picture of Baba, but I just thought that he was a very high soul and it took me three years to understand that Baba was God. But, um, to, to make this um, transition. But um, 
while while I was uh, in contact with Etzion, um, he was moving house at that time when we came to his house and helped him to move house with the children and met his wife and and um and at that time he said well why don't you where are you going he said and i didn't have enough money so i knew that i had to work in order to get enough money to be in india and that time my children would be with my with their father so i thought that i would go and work in europe because in Israel, you work and the money just goes uh, during the month. You work and, and, and the month takes all the money. So in order to get some extra money, I knew that if I want to stay for a longer time in India, I have to get some money. So I was planning to work outside. And so I thought that I would go to India. I would go out of the country around January and work outside and then... Um, get some money and then go to India in April because I thought that April was uh, springtime. And Etzion said, no, no, oh. you have to go to India now because in India, April is the hottest time. Mm -hmm. So um, so he changed, he changed the time that I was going in that mentioning that, yes, it's not, not springtime in April in India. And then he said, where are you going? And I said, I don't know yet, because I was going to search for my for my teacher under a tree, you know, like it was in Israel in the Bible time. So he said, uh, well, are you, which, are, are you going to go to Delhi or Bombay? I don't remember what, if something like that. And I said, I don't know yet, because I have not bought the tickets yet. So he said, well, why don't you go to Maribad first as a beginners? He said, um, the accommodations are very good for Westerners and the food is okay for Westerners and the people are very nice. And if you have to go on and continue, that can be a very good beginning um, to acclim acclimate yourself. And I said, oh, I said, oh, um, Baba is not in the body. So I didn't think there was some kind of ashram or something, you know, just a place like Etzion explained. Uh, and I said, yeah, well, it sounds okay. So Etzion said, why don't you write them? So um, now you can't write them because there was no um, no uh, diplomatic relationships. Why don't you write them, uh, send them a telegram. So I sent them a telegram that I want to come and I want to uh, volunteer. And, um, and about the time that I was going to plan to come and um, maybe I did send a letter, I'm not sure. Not a telegram, no, I sent a telegram and then as it John said, at that time it took two weeks to get to get an answer from because of there was no relationships. Uh, so there was no direct mail. So within very short time, very, very short time, I got an answer. Uh, and I, I went I wanted to reserve a place in the PC and I got an answer that I got a place and that I should come and Etzion said oh wow you really got yeah. <laughs> so quick now at that time if you needed a visa you had to send a visa through someone here to abroad in order to get a visa and it would take a few months to get a visa you have to send your passport outside to by someone who is working in this work he would go abroad he would go to any kind of um, embassy abroad and he would bring it back so when he had enough visas enough then he would go so it will take a few months to do but I have a British passport so I could do that immediately so that's what I did I went to England I got a visa very quickly and I came to Maribel and I never left. 
so this is the story with the Tzion, and it comes from this book, the Prem Ashram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mikhail. I'm sure mm. there may be another time. Wow. <laughs> to go way back. You have to speak English here. <laughs> I know most of, most of the tales, and I, I know a few more details which he didn't say. I sent a letter, a letter, I think, to the trust or to Eruch concerning Michal, and I got an answer. And I got the answer just before she left, and I rushed the answer to her. To her. I don't remember what was this. It was an important, important letter so that the Michal led to receive. <clears throat> this is what I remember about this story. Anyway, I want to I, I want to say one more thing, one more thing, because at that time that I met him, and he was in transition from one house to another, the way that he transitioned, Etion, he went from a regular uh, neighborhood, um, which is a very nice neighborhood, and he went to John Baptist uh, neighborhood, the place where John Baptist was born. And, and Karen. אין קארן. אתה עברת בדיוק לאין קארן. עברת דירה בדיוק. באנו לסדר לך את הספרים ולעזור לך עם הספרים. נראות. What year? What year were you going? We're talking about uh, 87, just, just uh, because I came, uh, just the end of 87, because I came to Merabad uh, right after <coughs> I'm on 88. We went to אין קארן 89. אנחנו, we moved to מעלה אדומים. So maybe when I came back, maybe when I came back. מעלה אדומים, we moved back to Jerusalem and to אין כרם. אין כרם, we stayed 20 years. אין כרם is a happy valley of Jerusalem. It is uh, still Jerusalem, westward of uh, Jerusalem. The, when you go out of Jerusalem, there is a road, not the main road. It's uh, one of the most uh, beautiful places in Israel. <clears throat> I found there an apartment and uh, we stayed there uh, <clears throat> almost uh, 20 years on and off. And uh, a few <clears throat> inter interesting years we spent under the Church of the Visitation. The Church of the Visitation is actually the very first episode of Christianity, where the two pregnant mothers of Jesus and uh, John the Baptist met in that neighborhood, and the an angel came and told them what uh, are the occurring in their wombs, what children are going to come out. That's a story. The story was made up by the mother of uh, uh, Constantine the Great. <laughs> he made, he, she made it up. All these sites in Israel, which are sacred for Christianity. <clears throat> she decided she has a vision. She came to Israel uh, or at that time, I don't know how they called it, they didn't call it Israel or Judea, or the Romans called it uh, uh, Palestine, to intimidate the Jews. Under, under the nation of the Philistines, which lived uh, in what we call today the Gaza Strip, more or less. <laughs> it was a Hellenic tribe that settled them. Doesn't to do with the Arabs. <laughs> there were no Arabs at that time. It doesn't matter. And uh, what I wanted to say, that ran out of my mind all of a sudden. The the story of the two mothers meeting there is is yes. a true story. Yes. Yes. It's yes. from the Bible. It's from the the. the New Testament, New Testament. But, so New but Testament. what he says about this um, 
queen, uh, yeah, she was very spiritual, and she said, "This is where this happened. This is where this <clears throat> happened." The mother of Constantine. She was not the queen, but she was his mother. He was uh, one of the last uh, pagan, uh, pagan uh, kings or emperor of uh, Rome, and he had a vision. <clears throat> in his vision, before one of his battles. He had a vision that if he will uh, place a cross on the flags, on the insignia of the Rome, Rome, he will win the battle. So he did it and won the battle, and then he became, he was baptized to Christianity. But uh, he was a warlord, and uh, he turned uh, the humble uh, stream of uh, Christianity, which is a Jewish sect, into uh, means to he started the first crusade it doesn't matter, it's not our issue let's go back to this little book of Michal <clears throat> 82 I go back again to uh, India I went there with my wife at that time I go to India we didn't have relations I went to the I, I told uh, my wife, let's go to Italy. We'll uh, get to the consulate of uh, India. And then uh, if we'll get a visa to India, we'll fly to India. If not, we'll stay in uh, Italy for some time. So we got to Italy, got to Rome. I went to the embassy. And uh, <clears throat> just for that time, I put a baba button. I never wear a button, bubble button. I don't care about these things. But I wear, <clears throat> at that time in Italy, I was uh, go, uh, <coughs> I walked around with bubble button here. I'm coming to the embassy, and the clerk looked at me. Ah, you are from Air Baba. Come tomorrow morning, get your visa. <laughs> so we stayed uh, two, three days in Rome. Uh, we were. Uh, seeing all the sights and here and there, and we flew to India. Coming to India, <clears throat> and uh, I wanted to meet uh, Mani, why she canceled the book on war. I uh, went to Jack Small, asked him uh, what can be done about this. My book was prepared, everything, all the layout, you know, it was a big expense at that time. Like uh, spending two, three thousand dollars today. Just to prepare it, it was inside the wheels. They started to print it. <clears throat> she told me, go to money. I went to money. Money said, we don't want you to start uh, your work with the book of own work. Well, I think this is my problem, not her problem. My problem is to check if the book is correct or not. But I didn't argue with her at all. I didn't say a word. From there, I took a... <clears throat> A rickshaw to Meirabad. It was uh, it, it was in her office in Kushu uh, quarters in Ahmed Naga. I took a rickshaw to Meirabad. We, we were staying at uh, Villa Vilu. There was already they opened the PC, the old PC, but uh, <clears throat> married couple couldn't stay there. Married couple uh, could stay at Vilus. So. We stayed at Vilus, also stayed at Vilus at 79 in the beginning. <clears throat> so I took a rickshaw, I went to, Mer to Merabad, I went to Merabad, I entered Baba's uh, Samadhi, and uh, I had a, a writing pad and a pen. I was sitting inside. Those days you could sit inside the Samadhi and uh, write. Today they don't permit it, I guess. Cannot sit in today in the Samadhi and uh, write or uh, do such things. At that time, there were no restrictions uh, like this. So I started to write. <clears throat> I was writing uh, whatever inspiration I received. And this uh, book came, uh, which I called The Story of Mankind. <clears throat> this book, book is in, uh, on my website as well. Some biblical version of God Speaks. Some kind of version which I made up in my language in biblical Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew, not in English. 
a version of a God Speaks. In a way, I was telling the story of mankind, trying to explain it, uh, the problems and in and outs, what it is. <clears throat> it took me, and at that time, I was, uh, in, before that, Kerry instructed me that my responsibility is also to translate, to finish the, to do the translation of the discourses. She told me that's my duty. And she started the Meir Baba Israeli Fund collecting money for the publication of the discourses in Hebrew. And the person in charge was Max Siebert from Cincinnati. <coughs> he opened the, an account and the Baba Lavas was only from the world contributed. I don't know how he arranged it, but there were some money was there, a few thousands of dollars dedicated for the publications of the Hebrew discourses. So <clears throat> I, it was in on my mind that I have to do this work. And uh, before that, I was preparing this book. I felt that uh, I have to start to write my own uh, books, my own versions my own uh, work, so I have to become uh, independent. So I don't need to be dependent on other people. If they will allow me to do this and all, all these restrictions, that I have to take responsibility as a writer. So I wrote the whole book. Uh, it's a small booklet, uh, 30 pages all together, I think. <clears throat> I wrote in Hebrew and I looked at it for some time and said, nobody is going to read it in uh, Israel. I'm going to translate it into English. And I actually spent a whole year work on this uh, project. And this was actually an introduction for my uh, the translation of uh, the discourses. And during this work, well, what happened? There were problems uh, with the English language mainly, not as able so much. And I was looking for a person to go over the manuscript and it was difficult to find. Eventually somebody recommended me an English professor. And this English professor was a woman who was writing a script for Hollywood, as she told me. And she taught me English for four years. Four years, every week I would come to her and she was giving me, she was giving me lessons, uh, private lessons in English. Till I, she taught me also how to, to write and to my uh, final work for her was some fiction which I wrote. <laughs> Michal may typed it later on. I may, may, may came up with some uh, science fiction uh, book with something and uh, <clears throat> it didn't come out. I didn't know what to do with it. Even I got some <clears throat> a good uh, opinion about this from, uh, from an expert. And this was the beginning of, uh, it, it, would, it establishes the basis for the translation of the discourses. And before that, I read the discourses uh, six times in a row was 81, 82, I was reading it nonstop one after another. And uh, it didn't speak to my heart to do this work. It's a difficult, uh, for me, it was a difficult intellectual uh, work. And I preferred uh, to do uh, such a work like substance robes and Mayor Baba on work. This kind of uh, uh, anecdotes, not uh, heavy, uh, such heavy, <clears throat> material like the discourses, you have to really work hard and meditate and uh, understand what Baba wants. Not everything Baba was uh, giving was easy. What speaks is not easy, discourses. It needs uh, contemplation and concentration. We have to work on it. <clears throat> At a certain stage, uh, I told Baba, you know, the, uh, I think it doesn't make sense to do the, I rather do other projects. I didn't tell you I don't want to, to do work for you. 
I enjoyed doing uh, the project before very much. It was great fun. It was a wonderful time to do these projects. So I got, uh, let's say, some un to say the least, some unhappy way from him. And uh, I got uh, this kind of, uh, <clears throat> as if he told me, every day translate three words. Just three words, not so. Open the book, trans translate three words, and go for your day, and that's it, every day. But if I didn't do it, it happened once or twice that I didn't do it, and then uh, I got uh, <laughs> some uh, correcting uh, fire, I call it. <laughs> now, what happened to the three words became to three sentences and three paragraphs, and every day I was eventually pub uh, translating a whole page or a few pages every day. And you can see how the master uh, works with his patience how he, he understands the <clears throat> psychology of the person, uh, how to educate him. No, no, very, very clever, extremely, <clears throat> as the Baba is, is his ultimate knowledge, is an ultimate uh, psychologist. That's what I can say all my life is of this. It is amazing. He can bring you around and he will uh, establish you and direct you to do the work uh, he wants, the work which is uh, what you have to do. You just have to build uh, this kind of inner uh, acceptance, inner uh, acknowledgement and willingness to be taught, willingness to accept his directives. And uh, I'm experienced many times this kind of infinite patience. It was waiting for you, giving, prod, but constantly giving this kind of a prodding, pushing gently, keep on doing, keep on walking, keep on walking, don't and never let go, never stop with whatsoever I was doing. And on the distance translation, I was walking about uh, 10 years. It took about 10 years. I started in 84, and 91, it was accomplished. From 84, when I started to work on it, I was, uh, the trust told me that I have to <clears throat> work from now on under the supervision of Don Stevens, who received the authority of uh, overseas publications for the trust. So I had to deal with Don Stevens which was, of course, a, a very unique experience. We used to exchange letters, and uh, we met uh, once or twice in Israel, once even uh, at Michal's house. One before that he came, and we went together to visit Kerry at her home. It was the uh, early 80s, and uh, at uh, <clears throat> Michal's home, I think it was... Uh, late 80s or early 90s or something like this. I don't remember the date. <clears throat> By 1991, the whole book was accomplished. Initially, Kerry directed me to, to take the translation of her father, of her husband, and uh, publish it or uh, work on it or take it as a guide. But I read it and I told Kerry, this is a very ancient and very high Hebrew. It's not a common Hebrew. We have many levels of Hebrew. It's too high, too complicated. It's not suitable for the modern Hebrew reader. So I had to put it aside. And I told Kerry like this, <laughs> that her husband, Mayer, who was a very high scholar, he did it for himself. That's what I told him. Uh, of course, I didn't tell her it was already 84 and she passed away 86. And the, the more time advanced, she could speak less and less. And uh, 
I didn't consult anything with her from uh, at that time. <clears throat> but I accomplished a translation. I actually did it three times because after I finished it once, the new edition of the seventh edition came and Don Stevens told me, you have to do the whole thing again. You have to refer now to this. This is the final authority. So I had to <clears throat> do the translation all over again. And when I did the second day, the, the translation, I found a few mistakes with the English. Because what was on, on my table was the old version, the three volume uh, discourses, my own first uh, version of the translation and the new seventh edition of the English. And I was comparing all the time the text, all three texts every day, I was comparing everything <clears throat> to make sure that everything is being translated properly. So I found two mistakes, which the Sherrill Press did. It happens. So they corrected it. The Don Stevens was very delighted that they found it. <clears throat> 91, Don Stevens was telling me, you have to find the <clears throat> professional editor to go over the manuscript. This is a requirement for the trust. Uh, a scholar, a professor, somebody who is, uh, this is his profession, to go over the manuscript, to make sure that, uh, so we will compare it to the original, to make sure that my work is correct. So I called one uh, of the leading uh, uh, publishing houses in Jerusalem, and they gave me a few names, and uh, I called one of them if they are willing to do this. <clears throat> so I gave them uh, the work and the estimation was there are 70 chapters and they wanted $70 per chapter, $5,000. It was 91, the Gulf War, uh, Israel was in crisis, there was no work, I didn't have any I'm a, con a contractor and I didn't receive any projects, didn't have any money. I said, this is Baba's work. I have money, I don't have money, $70 uh, a month. I will uh, scratch here and there, so we'll continue. Told him, okay, go ahead with your work and then we'll see later. So three months uh, <clears throat> passed by and I even didn't have this $70 per month to pay. After three months, they came to me, he and his wife, and they took me outside to their garden of their apartment. And behind the apartment, there was a yard, and behind this there was a dugout. As if you could go under the house, it was a villa on columns and uh, they dug it out underneath. Between the columns, the, the basis of the house, actually you could uh, build uh, like a cellar, you could build there an apartment. Yeah. And they asked me, can you do this? I'm, I'm uh, doing construction. I said, yes. And then we sat and we arranged the whole deal. And within a week, all the $5,000 were like a down payment. <laughs> and, and I was broke at that time. I didn't have any work and I didn't have any money. And I started to work. I started to work for them. I started to work for the neighbors. So I was uh, very busy for six months doing construction. So we got, uh, I, I covered the cost of the discourses. Right away, quite, quite in the beginning, we cut it off the $5,000 from the estimation. And uh, I, walked, I walked, was working there for six uh, more months for them and the neighbors, and earned uh, a little bit of money. Construction is a very hard work. You, you don't become rich to this. <clears throat> and uh, as I said before, I'm not a great businessman, but I survived and uh, we had some uh, money enough to go to the mayor center <laughs> in the United States. It was enough to cover a, a trip uh, for us to Mayor Center. 
Etienne, we're getting close to actually a little over time. Uh, okay. So I'm wondering if you can, uh, you know, wind it up now and we'll, I, I know your story goes on <laughs> longer and pick it up again. Uh, unfortunately, we are not going to meet next week because the Amrititi <clears throat> programs are going on. Um, yeah, you told me this. Yeah. So we're going to have to pick up your story two weeks from now. <laughs> but. Uh, and Okay. I, I, I would love for Etienne to say again how Mara told him to take a dark. Why won't you? Please tell that story of, about Mara, Etienne. That is, that's like gold. I love it. All right, it is. It's a one I totally agree. Yeah. Um, Etienne, uh, you may want to wind up your story, I, uh, you know, for this story. Yeah, and then tell let's. I'd love to hear that yeah. story. Ah. Uh, so I, I just want to add about the discourses, okay? Because these are the discourses that he did. Oh, okay. This wow. is the first uh, first uh, volume and the second volume. And it has some pictures from Merazad and Merabad Tower yeah. and Seclusion Hill and um, the Women <laughs> and the Lee and uh, Sunset and and it's really done very well and it was not easy yeah, for him so I yeah. think the story of the discourses um, is worthy to listen more what uh, what the journey takes in order to do this beautiful work also I think Etienne you published this in your home right you published in in your own private uh, publishing home <laughs> <laughs> <It's one of laughs> Yes, yes. Ken. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I prefer uh, the whole thing. I yeah, did all and, the layout. Yeah, so um, I think it's worth telling the story and also all the talks with, uh, with, um, with, um, you know, uh, Don Stevens and how he got the permission at the end to get it. So it's not, it's, it's, it's a journey. So you see that he's made all this journey from 82 to 91 and what he's telling now, which is not finished, and uh, he still has a journey to go until he is allowed to publish this and uh, to have this for the for the Hebrew speaking um, public. But I want to that this go as as an I think that this should be continued. You know. Oh, definitely. I yes. I I'm hoping you so can next time. I will tell. Uh... Most stories of, of the Hebrew discourses. So there is a, an article which I wrote on my website, the story of uh, Kerry Ben Shammai and the Hebrew discourses. I'm telling, I was telling this the story, the whole full story about this. It's quite entertaining. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> and uh, you have plenty of material on my website on uh, Kerry Ben Shammai. It was a, a long uh, story how to collect the videos and the stories, I can tell it next time also. And uh, we'll uh, discuss next time also <clears throat> from time to time, I'll we talk about the sanskars and the advents, etc. and why we have so much uh, troubles in the world. <laughs> and what can... Uh, 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 Sprozzi wants you to tell again the story of Okay, I went to 79. I'm coming to Leozad. 
I'm okay. I'm sorry, it's gonna go ahead. <clears throat> I'm uh, entering, uh, we went to Merazad. Of course, I didn't have an idea whatsoever about anything. But uh, before that, due to Baba's uh, insights to me, I knew the role of Mera, I knew what I need to know about her without reading anything. I think I, I said it like, last time. I can say it again. But I'm entering uh, Baba's room uh, where he dropped his body, which is next to Mera's and Mani's room. <clears throat> and I'm sitting in the corner opposite the Mera's door in front of uh, the bed. And there were quite a few people in the room. I don't remember how many, four, five, ten, maybe. And I'm sitting on the side, I'm looking at all this spectacle of uh, people going to a chair, kissing the pillow, kissing the photos. Uh, and I've never seen such a thing before. It looks uh, strange to me. But uh, I knew that Meir Baba is uh, who he is. Uh, and uh, why they were doing all this, I, I, didn't, I didn't understand. Because it was the first time I'm in India and I was not... Uh, acquainted with Indian customs of uh, <clears throat> taking darshan from the master. Then all of a sudden the door of Meira was flung open and she went, was rushing straight to me. Why don't you take Baba's darshan? And of course I complied uh, right away. Immediately I jumped, uh, I went to Baba's, uh, it was a pillow next to his bed, where people would bother, <clears throat> immediately obeyed her. And uh, the question is, how did she know? She was sitting in a room, most likely either she, is a, she was enlightened, she had the, she, the vision, or Baba told her, well, it doesn't matter. But she knew, she knew what to do, she knew what to say. It went right on. It was very impressive, very touching. Thank and you. I, Thank I had you. more in, okay. later on I had more strong encounters with Mayra. <coughs> 82. Yes. Sorry, what you wanted to say something. Oh. Rosalie. Rosalie. No, th thank you, you for telling that again. It, it just thrills me. I can't tell you. I I I I, Mara, I just love Mara so much that yeah. <clears throat> it's just wonderful. You know, Mara, it was <clears throat> such a grace, such a grace. I tell you, that you, I, tell you <clears throat> I tell you what I was thinking to do this week, and if I will be permitted to do it next week, next time, not next week, whenever uh, you will uh, decide, in two weeks or so. <clears throat> in my skates. Uh, Mera often plays a key role, and uh, I was thinking maybe we will read the, the last skit I wrote. I wrote about 12 or 13 of them. Every year I was writing one skit as I was uh, being inspired, and I think this was the best. Uh, call it, it's on my website. You see all, all these oh. little stories which I was telling Baba for his entertainment. <clears throat> and this one, uh, I named it the most beautiful garland in the universe. You can read it. And if somebody, or one of you, with a better accent than I am, <laughs> will be willing to read it, it will be <laughs> wonderful. This is a Mera, again, a Mera story. Uh, most, <clears throat> it's a Mera story. And maybe uh, Rosalie would like to read it. Rosalie is a good reader. Uh, I do, I do. Next uh, time. His, his kids are just very beautiful. I, I read them and they're so beautiful and so um, play, play. It's like it's like a movie. You see this thing. It's very beautiful. Uh, I just want to add, please, um, and I must add that uh, it's Yon, uh, for Lutfia. I, I don't have the same take as it's Yon has. I do agree. The same, and you touch the fan, like in the Arabic, the Israelim. What? And you touch the fan, like in the Arabic, the Israelim. But tell me, let's be, as a tatabin. 
Okay, Tatavin. Well, this is not the time for this. She wanted, Betty wanted to end uh, this session. Well, we can take Maybe it. next time. Uh, uh, next time. You can say whatever you want. Is a, is a, this is a free place to, for us to express ourselves. I'm, uh, we are open and willing for uh, people to share and say opposite things, different views, more than welcome. Yeah. about what is happening um, here for my view as a woman you know yes the next time maybe please betty just said a few minutes ago she, and by she wants she wants to by bring it to close this session so we will have the time in, in two weeks i believe yes two weeks <clears throat> definitely yes <clears throat> by the way if you noticed i'm uh, not wearing uh, all the time as uh, a spectacles which i used to wear all my life <laughs> they fix, fix my eyes, these uh, magicians, and uh, <clears throat> I don't need it. For reading, uh, watching the computer, I don't need it. Just for Probably. driving, it's a fantastic. They're doing uh, miracles these days. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah. Is, is Thank it, you. Michael, can you say it quickly or, or not so much? No, uh, just what I wanted to say is that I do agree with what Sion uh, is saying, that in each of us, there is the spiritual being and the material being, yeah? So in that, I really um, completely, um, this, this, I, I really, this insight is very beautiful because it is, I, you, you move from one to the other. So I do agree about that. But I don't think that there is a um, nation that is uh, either or, but that each one of us in each place, in every country has a choice and has and has the choice. If we, if we get the <clears throat> choice because Baba is open for us so we could go into spirituality. So thank you, that's all. Okay, that was brief. <laughs> all right, good. <laughs> we can uh, do, do... No, 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 not for today. Don't speak in Hebrew, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't need Good more time. than that. That's all I needed to no, say. No, that's that... okay. It's okay. We're wonderful. I'm uh, glad uh, to receive uh, uh, people. I'd be glad that people say things against what I'm saying. It's because not against. Can... It's with. It's no, not no, against. No, it's it's okay. with. I'm saying, no, what you don't say. It's not a question. We are not here uh, to say only what is agreeable. We have to learn uh, here to exercise uh, walking all kinds of situation with a good spirit. It could be somebody tell me I disagree with you and I will be willing to listen or understand and uh, make it uh, try to come to common understanding. That's the purpose of a spiritual group. We, will try we have to try to understand. Yeah, tread carefully. I okay. think, uh, yes, I, I think we've done well. Uh, considering all, uh, we always know it could be a little bit touchy. And this, oh, is Lufia gone? Oh, yeah, she left. Okay, um, good. We will continue. And uh, thank you, Etienne, for saying that you make room for all, all uh, viewpoints, I guess. Yeah, good. We've done, this has been lovely. I'm glad, thank you. Thank you for your stories. Uh, uh, that's what I'm really, I love the, I love the marriage. <clears throat> and Mikal also, thank you for speaking up. We, okay, next, yeah. uh, uh, next, and it'll be in February, actually. We won't meet on the 30th, we'll meet in February. Tuesday, Tuesdays with Etienne. <laughs> and the story, yeah. Congratulations on the discourses. It's wonderful to hear about that. <laughs> okay. Jay Baba. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you. I appreciate this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Good night, Sion. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. If um, there wasn't enough time for questions. That's that's a pity. It should be always time for questions. Because some Next people time. want to ask that Sion things. All right, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. We'll uh, we'll just ask maybe Thank twenty minutes. Yeah.
20. Yeah, because it's important because he has all these answers, you know, to answer and people might have questions to ask. And... Totally. I think that makes sense to allow for... As long as he tells that story, I'm very <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. He has more stories about Mera, more stories well, about Baba. It'd be hard to top that one, I can tell you. That was <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Thank you. Oh, I want, uh, let me let me show you this. See if you I I put You're green. dark. We can't see you. We can't oh, see yeah, you. Wait. Open. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> No. no, no, we can't see you. It's all dark. You're not on video. Oh, okay. Put the video on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, now we see you. Oh. oh. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Is yeah. that yours? Mara told Rainy to wear green. She says green will bring out longing. It will increase longing. Oh. Show us again, Rosalie. I'll spotlight. Yeah, and just focus on it. Yeah, but but we can't see it all. We can't. We see only half of the face. Yeah. More down. More down. More down. Okay. Oh no, no. Oh, Baba, that's beautiful. <gasps> wow, that's a beautiful mirror. Who took it, Rosalie? Do you know? Uh, um, Rail, Oh wow. Rail, yeah, took it. Uh, Yes. I, I, it's just so beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, tell me, is she? Um, is that yours from you, your previous home? Uh, that's um, that's Jonathan Burroughs. That's it. it's a very special picture. Yes, I never saw is. that picture. Wow, yeah. she's so gentle here. Wow, yeah, it's really, I tell you, I didn't know how to get along with with Raelia, but I tell you, she caught the picture. And then I, I we just added these. These are from uh, the Irish uh, St. Patrick's Day, and I thought, oh, we can I'm put them. I'm going to stop the recording now, just to FYI. Okay, and then you yes, can. Yes, yes, stop recording, yeah. Yeah.